Greetings, paper mache enthusiasts. Matthew here with some information that's really helping me out. So I'm hoping it's going to help you out at the same time. So what I have here is a paper mache head that is uh, in the process of being refined and made into something much smoother. And for this, I these days, for the past few months, I've gone back to use a lot of Cellucle, which is a product from a company called Activa based in Texas in the US and this, sorry this is the package Cellucle or maybe they changed it since I bought this a while ago but Cellucle is the name and I love it it's always eluded me you know f for, for a long time I thought Cellucle was difficult to control that it was uh, finicky that it was always too rough look at this texture this is nice, it's not rough, I can actually make it smoother without even using any sandpaper. Now that I've um, gotten to know it a lot more, uh, I'm able to do pretty much what I want with it. And I wanted to share with you guys uh, how I do this. And I'm not the only one using these methods, but so far I haven't seen a single place where all this information is available, so I decided to make a quick video. It's much faster for me than uh, writing a whole article about it. So here it is. I made this head out of uh, compacted aluminum foil and I put about three or four layers of thin craft paper strips. The glue I used was uh, boiled wheat paste and I really like it because it's very strong and of course you have to seal it before you paint it. But before you even seal it, it's a good idea to strengthen it and make it smoother and maybe even add some details like this uh, wrinkle in the cheek here. I added a mask for the cheek and uh, you know created that better more realistic uh, smile line so you can do this with Cellucle you can make very refined results this one has already been uh, corrected for the night I've just spent about 10 minutes on it just adding more Cellucle on the second as a second coat of Cellucle because before what it was was a few dowels for the fingers then I, I put some paper strips to join them together there's this uh, protective shape that I put inside to make sure it doesn't change its shape while it dries because it will become a pair of um, puppet hands for a glove puppet but the important thing for this video is that cellucle can be used to strengthen and to smoothen things so as long as your uh, paper mache is already strong for example this is a toilet paper roll that has been strengthened on the outside and the inside with a few uh, layers of, th of thin craft paper and even thin like this is still very strong it's very hard to bend it's, it's got a little bit of a give for now but once I'm finished at adding uh, more paper strips to the neck uh, because I want that border to be a bit stronger uh, then it won't move at all and I will have the strength that I, that I need the trick to adding uh, cellucle to a surface that is already dry especially when it is porous is to spray a bit of water and maybe even rub it in if you want and apply it with some tool. I prefer to use a metal sculpting tool. This is a dental tool and sometimes I'll even add a bit of water to it to uh, lubricate while I'm sculpting. So as long as you do it uh, without pressure, without too much pressure, you just rub it in. You can actually burnish it into a pretty good shape but here's the secret. If you wait for it, maybe 10, 15, 20 minutes, uh, without putting it in front of a fan, just let it rest on your table while you're working on something else and make, sh make sure it's protected from dust of course and um, when it firms up a little bit you can actually go back and do some detailing look at this here this uh, eyebrow was covered in a thick layer of clay I can actually now go back I think I have to actually slide it a bit more so if my tool was a bit cleaner I would be able to do much finer detail so to show you uh, I'll, instead I'll use a knife so you can actually go and do some pretty nice subtle textures on the firmed up cellucle so I could create a whole fur texture for an animal or a creature or even scales when it has firmed up a little bit to dry it I put it in front of a fan uh, overnight if it's not fully dry by the time I need to work on it I'll put it in the oven for 20 minutes at 250 Fahrenheit and uh, then I'll, I'll shut it down but I'll leave the piece in there until it's cooled down or until I run out of patience and test it for, uh, for strength and uh, dryness. So uh, you can do that multiple times, there's no limit to how many times I've, I've cooked uh, 
I've cooked dry this. I only do this once it's been dried for many hours in front of the fan. If you try to, to dry it directly in the oven uh, from the moment it's wet, you'll get a lot of distortions and shrinkage. It's very hard to control and you'll, you'll spend even more time correcting it. So that's the gist of it. Also, uh, when it's dry, you can actually go back with the, the water, and spray it on or brush it on, and then you can burnish it. You can use your tool. You, this is a dental tool. You can use a spoon. You can use different things. As long as it's smooth and hard, you can actually uh, rub it. It's called uh, burnishing. You can burnish it until it's very smooth. I haven't used a single piece of sandpaper on this yet, and uh, I know it's going to be really nice by the time I'm done. So I'm not doing that now. I haven't finished uh, correcting the surface yet and strengthening some areas like behind the ears. I'm actually working on shaping the ears a bit better. I'm not expecting this to be perfectly symmetrical. I like this guy to be asymmetrical on purpose. So I just wanted to share this with you. Uh, celluclate is wonderful if you know how it works. Uh, if you don't, you'll be struggling like me for years. I've been frustrated by celluclate because it's strong, it's smooth, but it's always been difficult for me to control the texture and the problem with uh, warping and shrinkage. With what I just told you, I can tell you that it's much easier because I apply it in thin coats. I don't go more than a sixteenth of an inch at a time, which is the equivalent of about half an inch. And um, that means that it will dry eventually. <laughs> Instead of taking a week to dry, it can take overnight in front of a fan. So cellulose is fantastic. You can ask, you can you can use it to smooth. You can use it to strengthen, but you can also use it uh, to merge things together. For example, these fingers were made with wooden dowels to save time because they're all the same size. And then I used uh, paper strips to join them together to create this uh, hollow uh, paper mache hand. And then the cellulose on top to change the shape, but also to make things smoother. Like the fingers, I fattened them up, them up on the side, make them more cartoony. And even if I see the wood here, because I said I sanded that down, uh, I can see that there's no separation going on. It's very, very, uh, you, it's very unified. It will not separate, especially since you you will eventually put a sealer on top of this before you paint. So as a sealer, I use a stain sealer, uh, the kind you use for your walls to hide and mask stains and smells. The one I I use these days is. Uh, Zinser Bullseye One Two Three, and that's the one I use. There are other brands on the market, depending on where you are. As long as it's a stain sealer or stain killer sealer for the walls, it will be uh, making the paper mache waterproof. And of course, every product product is different, but the one I use is compatible with acrylic paint, so I can paint my um, my uh, my colors on directly on the primer without anything that needs to be put in between. This guy has been made in the same way, uh, with the same materials. I mean, except that I use a mold. I made a cast of his head and I assembled it, and then I did the cellulose like like I'm doing now on this guy everywhere, and then I put a texture coat on top to make it even smoother. But if I had been a bit more patient, I would have been able to make it as smooth as that without using the texture coat. By texture coat, I mean a mix of a three-part joint compound with one part of acrylic gel medium with a little bit of color to help see what I'm doing. So, uh, but you don't even need that if you like a bit of texture. This guy want my customer needed something very smooth, so I decided to use a texture coat on top. But this guy, I'll, I'll leave it pretty rough. He's gonna be smooth to the touch, but he's gonna have a little bit of a bumpy texture, and I like that a lot. So that's about it. Oh, you can also uh, cast this in a mold if you're careful. To get more information about the process I recommend you find the article by Ronnie Burkett from about 1998. It's called Paper Mache Rediscovered and it's got a lot of information on, in it on how to cast uh, cellulose using flexible molds. It's a method that requires freezing and then using the oven to dry the outside, scooping out the inside and then drying it again until you have something strong. So check his work out actually he's got a, a really good Facebook page it's called Ronnie Burkett Theatre of Marionettes it's on Facebook easy to find 
and he's post he posts a lot of pictures of his work in progress. If you go back in time a little bit, you'll see from 2013 the production of his puppet heads. Some of them are made, actually most of them are made, if not all of them, made with cellular clay mixed with some paper clay, if I remember correctly. So check him out. I'll probably put a link in the description so you don't have to search for too long. So there you go. This is paper uh, cellular clay on top of paper strips. They merge very well as long as you put some water before you start applying and you can carefully uh, burnish things together you can keep adding things as long as you wait for one coat to dry before you add the next so after every work session I put this in front of a fan and I dry it for at least eight hours and if that's not enough I finish with the oven just to make sure that there's no moisture left in the thickness of it sometimes if I made it a bit too thick I'll use a pin and I'll, I'll poke some holes in there to make sure that the moisture get, gets out so next time I just need to put a tiny coat of steady clay on top and it's gonna hide it sometimes I don't even bother because the primer can take care of that if the holes are small enough so there you are this I hope that this helps a lot of people I wish I knew this about 10 years ago <laughs> my puppet work would have been a lot better uh, a lot sooner so there you go if you have any questions just uh, send me a, send me a message I also give uh, workshops online if you need them Thank you very much, and happy creating.